April 27, 2022, New York City. In a courtroom bathed in the cold, sterile glow of fluorescent lights, the stage was set for a case the world could have never seen coming. The man on the stand, Bill Huang. The founder of Arquigos Capital Management. We're a little too close to the sun by taking on an insatiable amount of risk. Today we unseal racketeering, conspiracy, securities fraud, wire fraud, and market manipulation charges against Bill Wong. Once the mastermind behind one of the biggest financial juggernauts on Wall Street, a man who had closed deals others couldn't even dream of now stood at the center of the drama. He appeared far more humble than the chaos and colossal losses he had unleashed upon the world of finance would suggest, dressed in a green turtleneck and beige slacks. Here he was reduced to an unassuming figure. Bill Huang faced a barrage of charges that ranged from racketeering to market manipulation and fraud. Huang would plead not guilty, but these were no ordinary charges. His crimes weren't a mere mistake or a good deal gone bad. No, the real shocker was how the man managed to squander a jaw-dropping $20 billion in the blink of an eye. It took him only two days to plunge into an abyss of financial ruin, and it would take many months to plead his case. But this ain't a story that begins in the courthouse. Let's wind the clock back. Saturday, November 7th, 1964, South Korea. Bill Huang's journey to that courtroom in New York started a long way from the glitz and glamour of Wall Street. He wasn't Warren, the Oracle of Omaha Buffett, and he definitely wasn't George Soros. He didn't have a silver spoon dangling from his mouth when he was born. That wealth and privilege some traders use to propel them to the top, Huang had none of it. He's the son of a Korean pastor and was raised with values that would shape his life in ways he never could have imagined. While his mates had the space to play and explore and be as wild and free as they wanted, Huang's early years in South Korea were spent in his father's shadow. His lessons were far from conventional. Most of them were stern teachings and lessons that instilled in him a strong sense of morality and a deep-rooted Christian faith. The values Huang learnt at his father's feet would later shape his character, even as he navigated the tumultuous waters of high-stakes finance. But his life wouldn't continue in South Korea for long. 1982. Huang was now 18, only a high school student. There was nothing too special about him. He was hardworking, respectful, and kind. Unlike most of his peers, he wasn't living wild and getting into all sorts of shenanigans. No, he was a good Christian boy from a good Christian home. He went to school, came back home, did his homework, helped out around the house, and went to bed to do it all over again the next day. Rinse and repeat. That was until his family made a life-changing decision. Korea was fine. There was nothing wrong with their home and their life there. But it was like his parents knew that his calling wasn't on the streets of Seoul or any other city in South Korea. They wanted as many opportunities as they could get for their son. With that, the family packed their bags and took a one-way trip. Destination, the USA. It was a bold move, but it's one they were willing to take for a shot at a brighter future. The family set up their new home in Las Vegas, but settling down wasn't as easy as Huang thought it would be. He faced the challenges of adapting to a new culture and way of life. He took the English name Bill, maybe to feel more at home in the new country, maybe because he was tired of people mispronouncing his name, who knows. But Huang wasn't about to quit and lock himself in his room or something. Nope, he was way better than that. And like a butterfly emerging from its cocoon, Huang began to thrive. His determination and work ethic soon became evident, and in no time at all, he got his first job as a cook at McDonald's. Life was good, comfortable. All the values of hard work, respect, and perseverance he'd learned from his dad poured into his work life, and his employers had no problems with him. They weren't big-time millionaires, but the family was happy. That was until within a year of their move when Huang's father died at the age of 50. Faced with the stress of the move and the pain of losing his father and mentor, Huang really couldn't do anything but press on. Huang and his mother moved to Los Angeles, where he studied economics at UCLA. It's at this point that cracks in Huang's armor of dedication began to show. You see, the man was now in a new city, and if you know L.A., you'll know it's not exactly a quiet haven. The excitement of nearby Santa Monica, Hollywood, and Beverly Hills 
made it difficult for him to study. He just didn't feel like it. Let's be real, the man had gone through a lot and not being able to work in that environment is pretty understandable. Still, Huang could barely finish his degree at UCLA with okay grades, but he did somehow manage to graduate. After he had his economics degree in the bag, he went on to earn a master's degree in business administration from Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. In America, Huang was hungry for success. He took on various jobs, working long hours to make ends meet when his peers were partying. He worked at a convenience store and later in a deli. Every job he took on, he worked with a certain drive that wasn't in other employees. This preacher's kid from Korea wasn't just there to pick up a paycheck and bank. He was planning, strategizing, gaining valuable experiences in managing finances and human relations. He remained strong in the values he was brought up with and even stronger in his faith. Little did he know that these humble beginnings, rooted in the teachings of his father and the courage of his family's journey to America, would one day collide with the fast-paced world of high finance, ultimately leading to a financial tale that would shock the world. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's more to this story, and it's a wild ride from here on out. From small-town Korean boy to Wall Street heavyweight, Bill Huang snatched up a dream most people left for bedtime and made it a reality. Sure, his earlier years were defined by resilience and humble beginnings, but his entry into the dog-eat-dog -dog world of finance would have him standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with unimaginable success and staggering risks. His first step onto Wall Street wasn't some huge Wolf of Wall Street-esque event. He didn't score some huge deal in his bedroom and have the world cheering for him or something. No, Huang stepped in all calm and humble, just like he was raised. He was level-headed, but he was hungry, completely driven by an earnest desire to succeed. Armed with his UCLA economics degree and his Carnegie MBA, he was ready to take on the financial world. His first showdown with the moneymakers was with Tiger Management, a massive renowned hedge fund led by billionaire investor Julian Robertson. This was Huang's initiation into the high stakes world of hedge funds, where money changed hands quickly and fortunes were made and lost in the blink of an eye. As always, Huang was in no rush. Instead of jumping straight into the thick of it, he took the time to hone his stock picking skills, learning from one of the best in the business. The high pressure environment was nothing to him. In fact, he embraced it. Like salmon swimming against powerful waterfalls, like a rock on a hill unshaken by the harsh weather, Huang dared to work in the lion's den. His strategy was simple, and it was one that echoed the words of his father, work hard, be honest, and have faith. At Tiger Management, Huang seized the opportunity to observe the mechanics of the financial world, understand market dynamics, and build relationships that would serve him well in the future. He absorbed the lessons and principles of investing, preparing himself for a journey that would soon redefine the contours of his life. Huang's ambition knew no bounds, but his workplace was a house on fire at the brink of collapse. The problem was, Tiger's largest equity holding at that time, U.S. Airways, was going through some financial turmoil. The company would face bankruptcy in 2004, but at the time back in 2000, they were dragging down the value of the Tiger Management's holdings. In March 2000, Robertson shut down the investment company and returned all outside capital to investors. Huang's old job was donezo, but he wasn't a quitter. He didn't come that far and take all that time studying patiently for nothing. In 2001, he approached Robertson with a crazy plan. He, Bill Huang, was going to start his own hedge fund. The entire focus of this new firm was going to be Asian stocks, an untapped market just waiting for a pro like him to step in. All he needed was a loan. Julian Robertson had carefully monitored Huang while he was still working at Tiger Management, and he knew that the man was a diamond in the rough. He just needed a bit of polishing and his own business in the market was just the thing Huang needed to make him shine. Robertson took a chance on him, and with the seed money, Huang started Tiger Asia, starting him on the path to success. Huang was finally running his own business, but he was no rookie. He didn't expect the path he was treading to be a bed of roses. Life wasn't a fairy tale. He was well aware of that. Still, he never expected Tiger Asia management to start gaining momentum as quickly as it did. Huang was a beast at his job. His uncanny ability to spot opportunities and navigate turbulent markets earned him a reputation as a formidable trader. Tiger Asia grew at rapid speed, amassing over 8 billion in assets at its peak. It was a meteoric rise, and Huang, ever the man to God, was at the helm of it all. Reflecting on his journey, Huang once remarked, 
I'm not afraid of death or money. The people on Wall Street wonder about the freedom that I have. Ultimately, the most important thing is the Bible. His unwavering Christian faith remained a cornerstone of his life, even as he ventured to the shark's pit that was the financial whirlpool. But the ascent of Bill Huang was far from over. The next chapter in his life wouldn't be marked by daring risks and colossal losses. He just didn't know it yet. And the tale of his precipitous fall from grace would leave Wall Street and the world in disbelief. Bill Huang's success continued to soar with Tiger Asia management, and it seemed like nothing could bring him down. He was on a roll, closing deals and stacking up money left and right like nobody's business. But, as the old saying goes, the higher you climb, the harder you fall, and Wall Street is basically the home of dramatic plot twists like that. It was now 2012, and after 11 sweet years of living the high life, dark clouds began to gather around Huang's empire. Tiger Asia Management was faced with a truckload of regulatory issues, and it wasn't anything little either. The firm was accused of insider trading in Chinese bank stocks, a cardinal sin in the world of finance. The damage it dealt on the firm, on Huang, was massive. It wasn't just a financial setback, it was a blow to Huang's reputation and a sign of the challenges that lay ahead. Never the quitter. Huang wasn't one to not own up to his mistakes. When he threw himself into the lion's den, he didn't expect to come out without bleeding. Facing the music, he didn't shy away from taking responsibility for his actions. He pleaded guilty to insider trading charges. In a statement, he acknowledged his wrongdoing, saying, I deeply regret my actions, and I am very sorry for the harm my conduct has caused. For a man who was one sailing smoothly at the top of the financial world, it was a humbling moment. But sweet words don't matter to the law and the fallout was inevitable. Tiger Asia Management had to shut down its operations in the wake of these legal troubles. It was a moment of reckoning for Huang. The hedge fund that had once managed over $8 billion in assets was no more. But Huang wasn't only a money-making juggernaut. He was also the king of never back down, never give up. His resilience and determination came through for him once again. Rather than packing his office supplies, kissing goodbye to his nice desk and walking away, he chose to transform this downfall into a rebirth. The first step was a change of name. Tiger Asia Management would be reborn as Archegos Capital Management. Huang was particular about the name. Archegos means leader or one who leads by example. He wanted it to be a testament to his determination to redefine himself and the fund. But Huang didn't just need a rebanding. No, the transformation ran deeper than that. He was rebuilding a fallen firm from the ground up so a simple name change wouldn't cut it. Huang undertook a comprehensive reorganization. He shuffled personnel, overhauled investment strategies, and revamped risk management protocols. He really decided to hit the reset button with one sole purpose in mind, to learn from past mistakes and chart a new course. Tiger Asia's solely focused on Asian stocks? Scratch that. Archegos would venture into different asset classes, regions, and industries. The aim was to reduce risk and unlock new opportunities. Compliance and risk management became top priorities to ensure his new company followed all ethical and regulatory rules. But it wasn't just about the mechanics of the fund. It was about rebuilding trust. Huang wanted to start a new business, and he knew he couldn't do that without the cool multiple zeros checks investors bring. And, well, after he flunked hard with Tiger Asia, they weren't ready to trust him. To reassure them, he communicated transparently about Archegos' revamped strategy and robust risk management processes. Maybe they were ready to take a big risk. Or maybe they were just fond of Huang and all the wild plans that ran through that humble head of his, but they were ready to work with him. With that down, Huang needed the financial resources to execute Archegos' new strategy effectively. With determination, he sniffed out new investments and forged partnerships that would breathe life into this reinvented venture. It was a journey that demanded a long-term perspective. Huang wasn't chasing quick wins. He was committed to rebuilding his reputation gradually, brick by boring brick. Through all this, his Christian faith remained unshaken, serving as the cornerstone of his resilience. And soon, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, Tiger Asia Management was reborn as Archegos Capital Management. His redemption arc had begun. It was a new beginning, a fresh chapter in the epic tale of Huang's. Reflecting on this transformation, Huang once said, In life, you have to learn from your mistakes and keep moving forward. Archegos represents a new beginning, a chance to do things differently.
His words echoed the resilience that had defined his life from the very beginning, shaped by the values instilled by his father and his unshakable faith. But we all know how the story ends. We know that this new beginning was nothing but a nice, cushy, fluff chapter and that the true meat of the story comes later. We know the tale would leave even the most seasoned financiers scratching their heads in disbelief, and it was just around the corner. The real question is, how did he get there? Calm down, the scary part isn't coming yet. Let's take a walk down the meadowy lanes of the good days of Archegos, you know, the soft petals of the rose before we touch the thorns. After the transformation from Tiger Asia to Archegos Capital Management, Bill Huang was ready for an ambitious comeback. The financial world had witnessed his fall once and he was determined to rise from the ashes, no matter what. He had some daring plans up his sleeve, was prepared to take risks he wouldn't normally take. But at that point, he didn't really care. His investment strategy was nothing short of aggressive. He wasn't here to play it safe. He was here to make a statement. He didn't just dip his toes in the water. He took a headfirst dive into a sea of risk. Leverage became his middle name. He embraced it like a long lost friend. Leverage, in simple terms, is using borrowed money to amplify potential returns. But it's a double-edged sword that can lead to massive losses if the market turns against you. For Huang, leverage was simply a means to amplify his bets on a variety of stocks, primarily in the tech and media sectors. His strategy was just like that of a high-stakes gambler going all in, betting big on a select few horses in the race and hoping they would win by a landslide. Huang was ready to take big risks to achieve his ambitious goals. Again, he was on fire, but he couldn't burn without fuel. Huang knew he needed a banking partner willing to provide the necessary financing and execute his trades. Luckily for him, he didn't have to look too far. His transformation strategy had gone well according to plan and soon. Archegos quickly became one of the top clients for major banks like Nomura. They were eager to do business with Huang, attracted by the potential hefty commissions and trading fees he could generate. But there was no end to the man's ambition. He wanted to compete with the big players, the top-tier prime brokers like Goldman Sachs. He wasn't content with merely participating. He didn't want to be just another pawn on the board. He wanted to dominate the game. To do this, he needed to build a trading empire that could rival the best on Wall Street. He expanded his team and surrounded himself with experienced professionals who shared his vision. His moves were bold, and he wasn't afraid to take significant positions in the market. Huang was a man on a mission, and he wasn't going to let anything stand in his way. His transformation from a fallen hedge fund manager to a rising star in the finance world was nothing short of remarkable, and everyone watched on with fascination as he kept on winning, kept on pushing boundaries. Apprehension set in too, but it only nibbled at the back of people's minds. Surely Huang was brilliant. Surely he wouldn't mess things up, surely, right? His aggressive investment style and leverage-fueled approach were either going to make him a legend or lead to another spectacular fall. And it was only a matter of time before the world found out if Huang was going to win the game or if it was going to make a blunder. Bill Huang's daring tactics and high-stakes game of leverage were like building a house of cards during a hurricane. At first glance, it looked impressive, but one strong gust of wind could bring it all crashing down. Huang had a fondness for total return swaps, a financial derivative that allowed him to gain exposure to a basket of stocks without actually owning them. Think of it like betting on a horse in a race without owning the horse itself. This gave him immense leverage because he could control a large amount of assets with a relatively small investment. He was essentially playing with borrowed money, and the stakes were astronomical. The trouble with leverage is that it's a double-edged sword. While it can magnify gains, it can also amplify losses. Huang was well aware of this but seemed undeterred. He was walking a tightrope, and it was a long way down. Now, here's where things get even more crazy. Archegos had become such a massive player that several major banks, including Credit Suisse and Morgan Stanley, were eager to facilitate Huang's trades. They were entranced by the fat commissions and fees that came with handling his business. The catch? they were unwittingly exposing themselves to Archegos's highly leveraged positions. In Huang's mind, it was a win-win. He got to execute his ambitious strategy with borrowed money, and the banks were cashing in on the action. Everyone seemed to be making money hand over fist, and the game continued. 
But then, just like with Tiger Asia, storm clouds began to gather. It was March 2021, and Viacom CBS's stock took a nosedive. You see, Viacom CBS was one of the major stocks in Huang's portfolio, and he had bet big on it. When the stock plummeted, it triggered a margin call. This is like a broker's way of saying you need to put more money in your account right now or we're selling your assets to cover your losses. Now, Huang was no stranger to market volatility, but this time it was different. The sheer magnitude of his positions and the leverage he had used meant that the margin call was colossal. Archegos had to come up with billions of dollars within days or the banks would start selling off his holdings. This is where the house of cards started to crash. Huang and his team scrambled to negotiate with the banks, but it was a losing battle. As the clock ticked, banks began unloading Archegos' stocks at a rapid pace. It was a fire sale and the prices of the stocks plunged even further. The financial world watched in disbelief as billions of dollars evaporated in a matter of days. The amount? A heart-stopping $20 billion all gone in two days. Huang, who had once been hailed as a comeback king, was now at the center of a financial maelstrom. Archegos's implosion sent shockwaves through Wall Street, and questions about how such a massive disaster could occur were asked in whispers. Huang, ever the enigmatic figure, remained mostly silent during this crisis. You could only imagine the pressure he was under as his empire unraveled. The fallout from the Archegos meltdown would leave the world stunned, and there was only one man who could be held responsible, Bill Huang. Wednesday, April 27, 2022, New York. The fallout from the Archegos meltdown had left the financial world reeling, and it was only a matter of time before the legal storm clouds gathered. Huang and his former top lieutenant, Patrick Halligan, were arrested at their homes. It was a reckoning they should have seen coming. The charges, racketeering conspiracy, securities fraud, and wire fraud. Here we are, back at the beginning, or rather, the end, with Bill Huang once again thrust into the harsh glare of the courtroom, a place he had grown uncomfortably familiar with. With $20 billion gone just like that, the legal machinery went into high gear. Lawyers for both men entered not guilty pleas during their arraignment, but Huang had a laundry list of allegations that painted a grim picture of his financial escapades. The courtroom was a stark contrast to the hustle and bustle of Wall Street. Huang, once a titan of finance, now appeared as a defendant dressed in a somber suit. The stakes were high and the prosecutors were relentless in their pursuit of justice. We all know what Huang did, but why wasn't he the only one arrested? Well, he wasn't the only one that danced the devil's pavan. His associates, those who had walked the tightrope with him, were also facing the legal onslaught. They were accused of being part of a web of deception that had allowed Huang's risky bets to spiral out of control. The prosecution argued that Huang's aggressive leveraging and use of total return swaps had not only endangered his own empire, but had also put the stability of the financial system at risk. They painted a picture of a man who had played fast and loose with other people's money, a man who had taken reckless risks in a relentless pursuit of profits. Huang's defense team argued vehemently that, while mistakes had been made, there was no criminal intent. They portrayed Huang as a visionary investor who had been blindsided by unforeseen market events. About the case, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission said, Eventually, the weight of Defendant's fraudulent and manipulative scheme was too much for Archigos to bear. And over the course of less than a week in late March 2021, the House of Cards collapsed. As the trial unfolded, the world watched with bated breath. The potential consequences loomed large. If found guilty on all charges, Huang and Halligan could face as many as 380 years in prison. Huang was released on a 100 million bond, secured by two properties and $5 million in cash. On the other hand, Halligan was released on a 1 million bond. District Judge Alvin Hellerstein, on September 8, 2022, set October 2023 as the month for the trial of Huang and Halligan. The legal battle isn't just about financial penalties, it's about accountability for one of the most significant financial crises in recent memory. The drama has reached its climax, and the outcome remains uncertain. Bill Huang, once the mastermind behind one of the biggest financial juggernauts on Wall Street, now once again at the mercy of the law. The stakes couldn't be higher, and the world awaits the trial with anticipation and apprehension. And so we reach the end of this incredible tale. 
a story that has traversed the turbulent waters of finance, greed, and ambition. Bill Huang, the man who began his journey from humble beginnings in South Korea, climbed the ladder of Wall Street and then came crashing down in a spectacular fashion. His life is a revelation to the power of ambition and the perilous allure of high-stakes finance. From the heights of Tiger Asia management to the rebirth of Archegos Capital Management, Huang's story was marked by bold moves, relentless determination, and a willingness to take risks that few could comprehend. He daringly used leverage, total return swaps, and aggressive investment strategies that defined an era of financial innovation, but also led to his dramatic downfall. As the legal battle unfolds, the world watches with anticipation. Will Bill Huang and his associates be held accountable for their actions, or will they emerge from this trial as mere casualties of a complex financial system? The stage is set, the players are in position, and the story unfolds.